Good morning or good afternoon to you, depending on where you are. Welcome to Roland Academy webinar series. Today we have a special guest, CadLink Technology Corporation. We'll be doing part one of a part uh, two-part series, Optimize Workflow with Power Tools and SignLab Software. Our guest today is Kevin Marshall from CadLink Technology Corporation. Thanks a lot, Dana. And welcome everybody to this uh, CadLink SignLab Print and Cut presentation. First of all, we're going to start with bringing in a bitmap. It's a low-res bitmap. Just going to scale this up a little bit here. And as you can see, once I zoom into this bitmap, zoom out a little bit here, you'll see it's uh, the resolution is pretty low. If I go up to image size, I can actually see that it's a 16 DPI 468K resolution uh, file size bitmap. So I'm going to resample this using our Super Size Image plugin. You hit F3, F7 to zoom to it. I'm going to go here to Image, Super Size Image. Zoom in. And we're going to make this 300 dpi. Make sure we'll make it a little bit smaller. We'll do 150, so we won't make the file size quite as big. 38 megabyte file size. Say OK here. Now it's basically resampling the image. So now we're going to zoom into this, and we're going to get a little better look and see if we cleaned up some of the pixels in this image. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in some text. And we're going to do a size 2-inch font here. We're just going to say... I'm just going to put this right over the text here. And I'm going to take the bitmap, and we're going to resize this bitmap from the bottom here up to kind of get this position to where we want it. And if I hold the Shift key and I right mouse button in the center of the nub, we'll bring in a vertical and a horizontal guideline. Next thing I'm going to do is just going to resize the text a little more here. And if I move this over, you'll see it snap right to the center there. So I kind of got that where I want it. So I'm just going to remove my guidelines by clicking the X, the red X up in the top panel. I'm going to select both my images. I'm going to go up to the Arrange menu. I'm going to go down to Clipping, and we're going to mask the bitmap into the text. Okay. Just going to hit F7 here to zoom to the text so we can get a look at this. Zoom out a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and create a, a bevel effect on the clipped USA Planes of Fame. I'm going to go to Image, I'm going to go down here to Eye Candy, and I'm going to go to Bevel Boss. We have a couple. This is the plugin that Cadlink has written for the Eye Candy effects. As you can see, um, the inside will be clipped. What's nice about this is we leave the vector path behind the object when we clip something. So if it's a little lower resolution. The vector paths will smooth out the, the uh, lower bitmap jagged edges on the uh, object. I'm just going to use here uh, the current fill. I'm going to set this at 300 dpi. I'm going to do a automatic and an automatic on the path source and the bleed. I'm just going to say OK. This is going to bring us into the eye candy window. I'm going to hit the Alt button and left mouse button. And I'm going to zoom out to take a look. Now you can you got some adjustments in here for bevel width or um, bevel scale size, some smoothness. Um, you can save settings in here. The, the typical eye candy settings. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get this back where I had it, about there. And so say OK here. 
So it's going to create the bevel. Okay, now we've got this uh, image selected here. Just going to select this. Okay. And I'm going to zoom back out here. Just going to push this off to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Bitmap. What's nice too is um, on, on some of the bitmaps, and um, you can you have a scaling tool here that you can just kind of scale it to the size of your uh, sign blank in the background. So I'm just going to kind of get this in the middle here just by moving my arrow keys. And actually, if you hold your shift key and use your arrow, arrow keys, it will move the object five pixels at a time. So now I'm just going to zoom back out a bit. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab my uh, USA plane thing here. First thing I'm going to do is bring in my uh, right mouse button and bring in a vertical and horizontal guideline again. So when I bring in the USA planes of fans, it's kind of easy to put it centered. Let's get it up there. I'm just going to arrange this order to the front. Okay, so now I've got this. I'm going to select this again. And we've got these nine nubs up in the top left-hand corner. And they're pretty nice. They reflect the nine nubs that are in the selection of the USA Planes of Fame. So I'm just going to select the middle nub. And I'm going to make sure my proportional scale button is checked in here. I'm just going to scale this up where it looks like it's in a good area for me here. And that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a different um, image here. It's another plane. Okay, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to mask out the background. And we're going to use a plugin called Fluid Mask. And um, we're going to go up here to Image. Go to Fluid Mask. This just takes a second to open up. And what we've got here is we've got some tools on the left, and we've got some adjustment sizes for our brush up top. Um, we've also got some edge finding uh, fields over here in edge blending. And if you see, if I increase this to more here, you're going to see the the vertical um, in the vector images that it's brought into the bitmap will increase if I hit the apply button. You'll see a lot more areas. So basically what happens is when you make a selection in this area, it only goes into the areas that you've selected. Um, so what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go back and go to viewer and I'm going to say apply to make this process much easier. Um, you can increase the size of your selection tool up here. Or you can use your bracket keys on your keyboard. And I'm just going to, it's right about there, I'm going to click there, click here, 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 here. We've got a few spots that I want to zoom into this one area right here. So I'm going to hit the zoom tool on my keyboard. I'm just going to zoom right into that one area again, select the red tool for delete. And I'm going to back out with my left bracket tool, and you'll see my selection tool decrease. I'm going to select, de select that so it's, that's what I'm deleting, the red part. So then again I'm going to hit the zoom and I'm going to hit alt left mouse button and it's going to bring me back in here. So I'm going to select image and the green tool would be a keep. I'm going to select image, auto fill with keep. What this will do is this will select everything in the image that has not been deselected with the, the delete tool. So now what you can do is if you take this camera here and you just kind of draw a marquee over it, you can see some areas that you might have missed. And this looks pretty good here. So now I'm just going to hit my escape key 
And down in the bottom left-hand corner, we have the Create Cutout. So I'm just going to click on this, create my mask. And you can actually click on this little arrow here if you want to see the transparency and actually zoom up to the edge and see how good it looks. The edges look pretty nice here, so I'm just going to create my mask. I'm going to say, my mask is done. I'm going to say File, Save, and Apply. So there's my transparency. I'm going to zoom out. Now I'm going to bring my object. Position it kind of where I want. I'm going to hit F3, F7 to select all, and zoom to select it. So now, actually, if you tab around with the tab key, you can see this is the up in the left-hand corner. This is the original bitmap. This is my clipped group here where I did my bevel. But get down here. This is my alpha bitmap that I've re removed my background. So I don't want this extra white space here um, on the bottom when I'm printing, so I can save on you know not you know the media coming out in the printer and everything. So I'm just going to double click on this. I'm going to select my bitmap, some bitmap editing tools here. I'm just going to create a marquee around what I want to keep in this image. And as you can see, it's put the blue line around just the uh, jet. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to draw a marquee over this to get it where I want it. Now I'm just going to create my mask there. So I've masked out the extra part of that bitmap. I'm just going to move this down a bit more. I'm using my arrow keys. So that looks pretty good right there. So I've got that where I want. And I could, if, if I wanted to, I could create a transparency very easily by using the transparency tools. Hit a little pen tool to the far right. Click on this. And you could you know, create you know, seven different styles of transparencies. Just make that a little lighter if I'd like. And next thing I'm going to do in here is um, I'm going to select the text and the bitmap and everything in this image here. Okay, and I'm going up to uh, first. I want to clean up. Well, I'll do my shadow here first. What I want to do? Oops, fault. What I want to do now is I want to put a soft shadow behind the USA Planes of Fame. So I'm going to select my entire images here. And I've got, if I tab around again, I've got a few different images here. So I want to make sure I have everything selected. So it's telling me I have three objects up here, the bitmap, the original, the older plane, the, the jet, and the uh, clipped object. I'm going to go up here to Image. I'm going to go to Eye Candy. And I'm going to Shadow Lab. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to do an outside effect now. And we have a few different sources that we can select. And we have multiple images here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bitmap that I want to embed the shadow into. So I'm basically going to select this image. And I'm going to do a manual selection on only USA Planes of Fame. So none here in the alpha channel. And the bleed amount, I'm going to set that to automatic. I'm going to say OK. And as you can see, we've got the soft shadow. And you can change it here. You can actually save settings in here. Um, you can change the opacity of it, whatever you like. This seems to be fine where I have it right now. I'm just going to say OK. And there's my shadow behind it. Um, also. Uh, I could let you know, too, I just want to pull this off to the side. If I needed to, for some reason, do a specific um, sticker, maybe, after the fact, and I wanted to do a contour cut around this bitmap that I've actually removed the background, it's very, very easy in um, Sign Lab to create a contour cut on bitmaps. So if you went up here and you went to cut, went to contour cut, and you selected, um, it's going to do the outside effect. I'm not going to do inside and outside. And um, I don't want to do the frame of the bitmap, which is a square. I'm going to just, so I want to be looking at the entire bitmap. And I'll set this offset for right on zero there. And I'll say apply. 
and I'll go OK. And as you can see, that was pretty quick. And I just put a nice little contour cut on that plane very easily. And again, if I clicked on that, you would see all the nodes that you need to edit that. You could. Um, but we're just going to delete that. And this job right here, we're not going to use that. So I'm going to move this back into the image where I wanted it. Zoom out a little bit here. Guidelines as well. There's my uh, plane right there. So the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to select entire bitmap right here. I know I have bitmap one. Again, if I select it here, it tells me it's the alpha bitmap. Um, I'm going to select this this bitmap. And we're going to go up here, and we're going to go into image. Filter Forge, and we're going to go into Frames. And we've got a few different style of frames that you can actually add to this. And scroll through, and if you double click on some of them, they'll change for you. There's quite a few plugins in SignLab. I think there's roughly around 150. So I'm going to select this one right here. And I'm just going to say apply. I'm going to see what that looks like. So one of the things I see in the image here is I see the USA planes and fan. That's a little little darker than I actually want. What's nice is um, I can actually go back into this this clipped group right here, if I wanted to, and we have this thing called Instant Replay where it, remain, it, it uh, retains some of the effects that I've done down the road. So if I double click on this, you'll see it brings me into this little group viewer where I can actually go into this bitmap, double click on the bitmap, and I could go up to image. You're going to see some of the different plugins that we have here. We have uh, some under easy color adjustments. A lot of things you can clean up bitmaps, make objects white, um, you know, that are almost white, um, increase saturation, blur images. Here's some other different features here for bitmap adjusting, uh, swapping colors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to go into the contrast and brightness. And I'm just going to bump up the brightness a little bit. And that's a where I want to get it right about there, and I'm just going to say OK. And that just, once I close that, and that gives it a little better uh, effect on the, um, on the background. And um, I kind of got everything where I want it now, and I'm just going to select this entire image. Up top here, it's telling me this is a 37 by 29. So I'm kind of working in real size here. I haven't um, scaled this down. So if I wanted to send this with a contour cut, again, I can just go under Cut, Contour Cut. And if I wanted to send maybe a little bit of an offset, I'm just going to do a bitmap frame here. I'm just going to say Apply. And, oh, didn't quite grab everything there. So let's just get everything here. Group. Here's my alpha bitmap. Here's my regular bitmap. So if I just wanted to send this, I'm going to edit, select all, file. This will be sending this first to the Sign Lab um, RIP to print and cut. So I say select print and cut, and I've got a Roland SP300i set up. And if you go into this little setup tab too, you've got some. Uh, you want selected objects only. Um, you do some there's some different basic functions in here for, for different printers where you can you know if you want to send the guidelines, you want to send dimensions and notes, um, 
whatever. So I get it set exactly how I want it. So I'm just going to say OK here. No. Okay, and since since my printer here is uh, my page width was was automatically seen at 28 inches here. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees, and I'm just going to bring this in so I can still see on the on the right here the red that it's it's going to be clipped off. So I'm just going to click on my image. I'm going to double click down here, and I'm going to bring this down to like 27 inches. And I've got everything exactly where I want it. If I want to zoom into here, I can see my image. And if I go in here, I can double click on my image. And I could go in and select what type of media I'm using. I've got banner. Maybe I want to use a 360 by 720 standard uh, print mode, which is uh, a little lower res. Maybe it's just a quick banner that I'm doing for um, this job here. Select that. Um, you've got some other features in here, too, where you can go in and actually look at some settings you might want to change. Um, you can change from bi-directional to unidirectional. You can, if you don't want to use the settings in the control panel on the printer, you can override them in the software if you want. The scan speed you can change. But most of the time, these settings are fine the way they are. Um, so we're just going to... Uh, Say OK here, and uh, if you want to send this job, you can just right mouse button, you can say print, or you could just rip the job. Um, and we're just going to rip it right here. And we had a few things in there too. So we had, um, you know, a clipped group, a transparency. Um, we've got a you know decent sized bitmap in here, and it's, it's pretty quick ripping it. Done. It took basically about 10 seconds. And if I wanted to view the raw data, um, see, make sure the size and everything, I could just right mouse button and go down to raw data, say OK here. And if I just back out a bit here, I'm going to take a look. And actually, if we look at the properties here too, we can just make sure that sizes are correct and everything. This is fine. So we've got everything in the image here. This this view raw data is very good too if you're working with spot colors. You can go into the color plane. If you've got spot colors like a, a lot of the roll and printers support metallics and white and everything, you can turn colors off and you can see select a different color background. So you can actually you know, view something if you were printing on black media with, you know, with white, you could really get a nice visual of um, what the spot color is going to look like and everything in here. So I'll just close this. Close that. So then you can just right mouse button and then we can send it to print. Um, now what I'm going to do is, I mean, I've got some different queues set up here. We want to delete this queue right here because we don't like that company. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so. Basically, I'm going to close this window here. And now, as if we were going to send this, we've got some features that are really unique to SignLab that work really well with uh, the Roland VersaWorks RIP as well. As you can see down the bottom here, I have a palette loaded. If uh, I move my colors over here, this is the Pantone palette right now. Um, we do have the ability to load the Roland VersaWorks palette, which works you know, really well. And, um, if you go under the Options menu under Sign Lab Setup, under Color Management, we have uh, Roland VersaWorks Color Management, so we can get the proper um, mapping of colors from uh, RGB to LAB to CMYK. And uh, it's really important. So again, I'm just going to go in here. And uh, I'll just send something like this over here. So we'll just take this. We're just going to go in here. We're going to do a cut. We're going to do a contour cut. And I'm going to do the inside effect as well here. And I'm uncheck bitmap. I'm going to say apply and go OK. So now we've got this selected. And I'm just going to say file. And what's nice is when you have the Roland VersaWorks feature 
add-on to print and cut, or we do make a sign lab for VersaWorks package, uh, which lists at $500, you can print directly to Roll in VersaWorks. So it avoids having to export and then import into Roll, uh, Roland's application VersaWorks. So we'll say OK here, and we'll select the printer. And if you, it's the same setup, kind of what I just showed you in Sign Lab. And I'm just going to say OK. And this should launch VersaWorks. Okay, so there's our job right there, and you can see we have our dancing ants, as they would say, inside of inside of Versa Works. So that's how easy it is for the job to come over. Um, I just wanted to show you one thing too when we go back into Sign Lab. Delete. I'm going to show you where you can find the VersaWorks palette. So I'm just going to file say new. Clear my screen here. And if you left mouse button on the three dots in the lower left hand corner for the color palette, you can go up here to load and you can say new. And if you go under the uh, Sign Lab directory, CAD link, Sign Lab 9.1, you'll see a directory called Palettes. Right here we have the Roland VersaWorks palette. So what we did in Sign Lab is we left the RGB colors in the front. So we've got the Roland VersaWorks palette after this. So I'm just going to scroll down here and you'll see as I click on a color. And there's the Roland VersaWorks slash DG17J color right there. So if you wanted to print this out for your customers, um, it's really nice. You can just right mouse button. You can say create a palette swatch. And I recommend anybody who's using Sign Lab and Roland printers to do this because it's it's nice for your customer to look at the actual files printed out, this swatch printed out on different materials to match what colors they would like on their on their artwork for vector objects. So my print is, uh, I'll just say my print is 54 inches wide, and the height would be 100. So I'm going to set my margins. Set these for 0.2. I'm going to tab over 0.2, 2, 2 for everything here. And my spacing, I'll do the same, 0.2, 2. And so I'm just going to say OK here now. And what this will do is this will bring in, so let me select F3, F7. This will bring in all the colors, and you can see it has the dimension on uh, the notes on the specific Roland VersaWorks colors. So if you wanted to send this out with different materials, it's very easy now to the VersaWorks or to the Sign Lab print and cut rip. Um, makes things uh, much easier than have to go in and maybe take one color and you know metamorphosis a different color. And to try to match certain colors, there's a, lo a lot of people try to do that. And I can show you how that's actually done as well. Um, we can go in here. We can okay. So we've got our object here. Okay. So I'm going to make this. Not to my colors down the bottom. Say you need to uh, match a. Uh, for some type of yellow color there, you want to do a little duplicate of this. I'm just going to bring this over here. If you right mouse button on the palette here, you can bring in a guideline if you want. You just make sure your objects are pretty close when you're going to do this. So I'm going to change this color to a. Maybe you're trying to find a color in between these two colors. So you can go up to Transform, you go to Metamorphosis, and I could say I want to do 10 new layers in between this here, and we'll just say OK. And if you look at the very end of the 
palette here. Last colors that we have over here were the last ones that we created, these swatches. So you can see the values of some of these colors. Maybe this color was the right one right here. So you can, you know, see the values of that. You can print that out. And so you do a printout of the of the different variations of the color to match the exact color your customer is looking for. So that's one other way. Um, one of the things I also find are very, very easy to do in Sign Lab is um, when we're working with really complex bitmaps. And I've got an image in here that I'm going to bring up that is, um, let's see. So I'm going to pull out a photo. Okay. This is uh, just a picture of this girl here. What we're going to do is um, we're going to show you how powerful our contour cutting is. So I'm basically going to go in here. I'm going to do a cut, contour. And um, we're going to just start off by doing an outside effect. We'll put a margin of 0.10. And this bleed amount right here is nice, too, for vectors. If you're doing long runs of decals, you can actually bleed the vector object out a little bit and still maintain the contour cut. So if your registration shifts a little bit, um, it's a nice little feature to have if you're doing um, maybe 10-foot runs of decals. Um, I don't seem to have a problem in my registration with my, um, my rolling printer here. It seems to work very well. So I'm just going to fly here. And we do have some different settings under our trace setup here. And this is all tied in with our scanning and vectorizing. I'm um, just going to use uh, the con cut contour here. This seems to work really well doing contour cuts. I'm going to say OK. And as you can see, it put that contour cut right on the outside here. Now, to show the nodes on it, you can actually pull it to the right so you can see it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little more intricate here. I'm going to try to get the eyelashes, and I'm going to go right on it. And this is a, you know, image that's just a bitmap. That's all it is. So I'm going to say inside, outside. I'm going to do everything the same. I'm going to change the offset now, too. You can also do negatives in here, too, if you need to do a negative. Um, I'm going to do this right, right on zero here. I'm just going to say apply. I'm going to say OK. You can see how fast it does it. Now I'm working with a laptop here, so um, this goes to show you. I've only got four megs of RAM, four. and uh, there you go. And if you want to uh, click on this object, you could actually go in and edit any of the parts of the object here by just OK, and go up here and you can zoom to it or what. That's uh, to show you uh, how powerful the contour cutting is, and even with um jobs that, you know, I had a person come in to me and brought me this fish and they said, well, I was having a lot of problems doing the contour cut because the background was a little different color. And I'm going to go down and show you just the tools, that the power of working with vectors and bitmaps together um, as opposed to going back and forth from like Photoshop to Illustrator. Um, it makes it nice and easy. So I've got an image in here. Let's see if I'm Like this image right here, we're just going to pull this out here and delete all this here. Um, I'm going to zoom to this. And um, you can see this has got like a gray background. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into image. I'm going to go into color adjustments. I'm going to hit this clean up white here. And basically, it's going to take anything that's pretty close to white. And it's going to um, you know, make it white. So I'm just going to hit clean up white. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean. I could do it again here. I see some images down here that are, are if I zoom into it. You can see, I could probably try to remove them too by doing it one more time. So I'm going to uh, go back in here again, and I'm going to go to clean up white again. It'll probably do it one more time, but that, that's pretty close. I could actually, if I wanted to, I could just double click. And we've got some bitmap editing tools so I can select white. Uh, take the brush tool and maybe uh, select 
the brush and just you know go in here and clean this up a little bit real quick. That's fine. I'll just click off of that. Close that. And I'm going to hit F3, F7 to select all and zoom. And if I go in here and I go cut, contour cut, and do check that, say apply. Okay. And there we go. That was, uh, that was, again, done pretty quick and easy. And uh, there's the contour done pretty fast, cleaned up pretty easy. Okay, so um, we've got a few more um, moments here. Just go in here and, again, maybe we can go over this one of the features here again to the fluid mask. Show you how powerful this fluid mask really is. Um, you just grab this girl right here, and hair sometimes can be tough to to um, get rid of um, you know, the ends of it to make the transparencies blend in. I'm going to go into image, go into fluid mask. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my delete tool here, and I'm going to select some areas once this filters through. Click here for that. I want to delete that right there and down in there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to, maybe I'll grab this little area here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the blue tool here, which is um, not sure, and I'm going to Take my selection tool a little bit bigger. I'm just going to kind of go over this area right here. This is the area that I'm not really sure if I want to keep or delete. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I don't care really too much about the rest of this here. Bottom right. I want to make sure that I have my uh, protect mask is protecting my keep, my delete here. Sure, I protect my blend. Key. Now I'm going to go in here and say image autofill with keep. And then if I go in here and I create my mask, I'm going to say file, save, and apply. And I'm going to bring it back in and it looks pretty good. You can even see if you go up to the edge the girl here, that transparencies work very well. Um, and, um, you know, it's a real powerful application plugin that we put into Cyanide because we, we want to prevent the customers from exporting and importing and using all these different applications to get a final output. And, and sometimes you'll get color shifts and everything. So I just uh, feel that it's a uh, very valuable to be able to work with bitmaps and vector in one application and um, have a smooth transition um, you know when you're, when you're going to output your file and yeah, we're doing pretty good on time here we're at uh, a quarter of um, Dana are we um, are we going right till one o'clock we typically save about 10 minutes towards the end, so you have about five or eight minutes left if you have anything else you want to talk about. Otherwise, we can go to a Q&A session. Yeah, we can go to a Q&A session. That's fine. Okay. We have uh, one question from Robert. He asks, uh, came right around 926, so it was about almost 20 minutes ago. He asked, why didn't you remove the mask on the alpha channel bitmap so that the contour cut was the actual outside of the print? Um, I could actually I could have deleted the I, I actually could have done that um, because we can actually work with alpha channels we can split alpha channels in sign lab and delete them yes I could have. that's a good point okay Robert I hope that answers your question uh, Kent asks, uh, Sign Lab for VersaWorks lists for $500. Is that what you said earlier? Yes. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, do we have any more questions from our audience? Uh, Kent is asking where it can be purchased for that price. Um, you can you can call Cadlink and they can refer you to one of the dealers that we have. It's uh, the 800-545-9581 is the sales line. Uh, Yannick is asking, is there a link between SignLab and Corel? Um, yes, there is. Um, we load an icon in Corel, in Illustrator, and in Photoshop to transfer files um, pretty seamlessly to either the uh, SignLab design engine or the visual print manager as well. Okay, uh, Kevin asks, where can I purchase the Filter Forge? Um, I think you would go online um, to purchase the full version of that. Is that something that can be done from your website or through distribution? Um, oh, I think it would be online. Actually, Mike would would know. Yes, hello, uh, this is Mike. Uh, the um, FilterForge can be purchased, the, the, as Kevin said, the full working copy directly from FilterForge. Uh, the plugins that Kevin showed come uh, within SignLab as part of the print and cut package. Okay. Uh, Ron asks, I have an earlier version of SignLab for VersaWorks. Can this be updated to a newer version? Yes, it can. The upgrades um, range from $150 to $200. Uh, Terry asks, what's the best way of getting Flexi files into SignLab? So perhaps they're looking to upgrade to SignLab from their Flexi package. Um, if they've got a real old Flexi uh, software package, we can bring in some of the CSV files in the older file formats, but unfortunately they have to export them as PDF and then bring them in as PDF or AI or um, you know EPS. Okay. Uh, Yannick is asking, is everything you're showing today part of SignLab or are there multiple different packages with different features in them? What we're showing today is the print and cut. Um, there's really uh, three packages, well actually four. Um, there's uh, Cut Pro, which is uh, the low-end vinyl. Um, the uh, vinyl package, which is the same as the Cut Pro, but it drives multiple cutters. Uh, the Vinyl Pro package, which has all the color tools and no rip, and the Print and Cut, which it has everything, all the color tools, all the vinyl tools, and the rip itself. And, of course, we do sell uh, the SignLab for VersaWorks package as well. Okay. Uh, Rita asks, what's the best operating system if they're thinking of upgrading their computer? Um... I'm using it on Windows 7. Windows 8 works fine. Um, SignLab 9.1 supports Windows XP Service Pack 3 or higher. Uh, so Yannick's looking to confirm the print and cut package is $500, is that correct? No, no, no. The SignLab for VersaWorks package is $500. The SignLab print and cut package right now is $1,500. That's a promotion. It normally lists for $4,400 with the fluid mask.
Okay, are there any more questions for Kevin? Uh, Tim's asking when SignLab 9.1 came out. Um, I want to say, Mike could probably answer that question a little bit better. I want to say a year and a half ago, or... SignLab version 9 came out uh, approximately two years ago, and SignLab version 9.1, which was more or less a bit of a color management update version of SignLab, uh, came out approximately nine, ten months ago. Okay. Um, Rita was asking earlier about the operating system. She's curious, does she need a separate computer for the RIP station? Um, no, depending on how much she's going to be designing. Um, you know, if she's working with a lot of larger bitmaps, you know, she should have a lot more RAM. But no, a lot of people use the RIP station right on their main computer, uh, which works fine. Um, we do have the ability to load the cut manager just for vinyl cutting on a separate computer without a key, which some of our users do that as well. But I mean, she she, she could buy the uh, you know she could buy the uh, design package and the digital factory RIP if she wanted to have two different stations design on one and then have um, the digital factory which is the same as the visual print manager but it's just the standalone rip on a on a separate computer so it, it just depends but a lot of people use the uh, print and cut on on one station as, as long as you get I would say at least four gigs of RAM okay so Rita four gigs is recommended uh, Terry's asking can you set up 3M color palettes? He uses all 3M materials. Uh, yes, we do. We have uh, quite a few color palettes. I think there's over close to 50 different manufacturers, Oracle, Avery, 3M. Um, there's quite a few in there. We have you know, the Roland metallic palettes. We have you know, all the Roland palettes uh, you know, for the older devices as well. But um, yes, they're in there. Okay. Uh, Kevin and Robert both ask different variations on the same question. So are there any benefits from upgrading from SignLab 8.1 to 9.1, and what would be the cost? Yes. Um, a big one, transparencies. Um, depending on the package that they have, it can be as little as $250 or, uh, you know, up to, if they have the print and cut, it's $500. Um, but yes, there's transparencies, there's new menu boards, there's um, all kinds of um, new plugins. We've got, we handle bitmaps a little differently. We can actually support, we're supporting all the CMYK TIFF. And um, we've got uh, some new features like beveled line styles. And you know, there's hundreds of new features. You do get tech support as well. And we also, uh, on the upgrade, we give you a free $200 training DVD. And, uh, and just to add to that, if anybody is interested in additional information, if you visit www.cadlink.com uh, on the SignLab product page, there is a downloadable PDF brochure. It's called uh, SignLab version 9 highlights brochure. And that pretty much will outline the top benefits and features of moving to SignLab 9 from SignLab version 8. Okay. Um, Kevin asks, is FilterForge in 9.1? Yes, it is. Okay. We have a question from Kent. He is a trial version of SignLab for VersaWorks. Uh, he's interested to know how to activate that. Is it through CadLink? or do they need to go through a dealer and also is there a dongle? He's downloaded a trial? Yes. yes uh, the software must be shipped out to him with a key so he would have to order it and then they would send him out a complete package with all the installed disk, a security key and everything. Is it ordered through CadLink or through a dealer? You would go through a dealer. Okay, we have a little bit more time left. Do we have any further questions from the audience? Okay, I'll uh, take presentation control back from 
Kevin. Uh, Kent asks, is Roland a dealer for CadLink? No, I think they have their own separate distribution channel. We do partner initiatives like this, Kent, where we uh, provide solutions to each other's user bases, but we don't actually sell any CadLink products. Uh, so I'll take control back. And what I will show here, uh, the Roland Academy page, which is at www.rolanddga.com forward slash academy or forward slash webinars will take you to our webinar page. Uh, this is where you'll see that we have part one that we did today and then part two is on February 12th. Uh, for those of you that are Roland owners, you can see any of our other webinars that we schedule here. We try and keep them a couple of weeks in advance. So you'll see we have your February 19th for our Roland milling solutions. Those are MDX milling devices. Uh, if you're not a, a registered Roland owner, you can click on this link here to register. And if you have any interest in any other webinar topics that perhaps we can investigate, if you have other uh, CadLink featured products you'd like us to look into and, and discuss with CadLink, this is the perfect place to do it. You can click right here to submit a webinar topic. This will open up a pre-populated email to the Roland Academy team and just let us know what you'd like to see. So that wraps up our broadcast for today. I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to thank uh, Kevin and Mike from CadLink for being on the broadcast with us. Remember to register uh, right here for part two on February 12th, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us.